keeping up with all these jokes? That is not my job. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest running gags from Drake and Josh. There's a new jersey? <laughs> Yeah, they just opened it. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're busting our guts over some of the best recurring jokes, catchphrases, and gimmicks centered around our favorite Nickelodeon stepbrothers. Just a warning, there will be spoilers <laughs> along with the hilarity. <laughs> okay, this is so going on the internet. <laughs> Number 10, Crazy Steve. There's really no better use of my time than to make sure every blessed cup holder is rock solid steady. Out of all the oddballs in Drake and Josh's lives, none have been as consistently funny as Crazy Steve, Josh's co-worker at the Premier Theater. He definitely lives up to his nickname in spades. In every episode he appears in, he's guaranteed to either engage in some absurd behavior or blow his top with his violent mood swings. There is a reason he's not allowed to work on Mondays. It's not made known why Helen hired him in the first place or how he got his job back after quitting, but what was supposed to be a one-off character blossomed into a recurring asset to the series, even being referenced outside the show. See ya. Number nine, Helen's favoritism. Wait a minute, what was I saying? It was something about the- Hey, Helen. Oh yeah, go mop the lobby, some husky kid got sick. <laughs> Josh loves his job at the premiere theater, but his boss Helen doesn't give him the respect he deserves. Instead, she insults him and berates him, barely acknowledges everything he does for her, and treats Drake like a prince. Drake always did have a way with women. Helen lightens up on Josh over time, but she still doesn't realize how lucky she is to have him under her employment. Though, admittedly, it is hilarious to watch Josh get frustrated. I mean, shouldn't you be at home? You can't see. I see you getting on my nerves. That's what I see. <laughs> What makes this even funnier is how Josh's Helen trouble is the polar opposite of Drake's situation with their mean teacher. She respects Josh and absolutely despises Drake, and she doesn't even try to hide it. A D minus? What's wrong with it? I don't know. Just write another one. <laughs> Number eight, evil little girl. Well, I was just out here trying to learn about space, and Drake and Josh pushed me down. <laughs> Evil exists in Drake and Josh's house, and her name is Megan Parker. All day long, little Megan goes out of her way to prank the boys and make their lives miserable, and her tricks often range from semi-innocent mischief to borderline sadistic and manipulative. Unfortunately, she's a smart girl who knows how to cover her tracks by putting on a sweet little girl facade in front of their parents, usually when she wants to make her brothers look bad when they try to call her out on it. While it's infuriating that she has her parents wrapped around her finger, it's funny to watch our favorite boobs fruitlessly try to outdo their little demon sibling. Too bad she's always one step ahead of them. Number seven, Josh's big head. Aw oh, man, I missed your head. How could I miss your giant head? Out of all the insults Megan can think up, she always finds a way to bring up Josh's giant head. After a while, many of the other characters started to take note on how his head is slightly bigger than average. A trophy with a giraffe on it? The trophy shop was out of people. <laughs> to be fair, once Josh loses weight in season three, his head size is a lot more noticeable. So it's not just a recurring insult at his expense. That's the boy with the flesh-eating virus! The one with the big head? Yes! Okay, it's not that big, first of all. And whoa, wait, wait, drink where you go, I'm feeling better! While he can't argue that he has a bulbous cranium, it gets tiresome fast when he has to be reminded by literally everybody of something he's fully aware of. But we can still get a chuckle out of the reminder and Josh's responses. You got a big head. <laughs> yeah, old news, dude. <laughs> Number six, Megan. Megan! <laughs> Whenever trouble arises and the boys realize they've been bamboozled, all they can do is mutter the name of the demon responsible. Megan. <laughs> their lividness is made loud and clear in their voices when their devious little sister strikes, whether through frustrated grumbles or furious declarations. Megan. <laughs> Funny enough, it's almost similar to a gag in Seinfeld where Jerry would exasperatingly shout or mutter the name of his arch nemesis. Norman. <laughs> While the boys have clearly had their fill of Megan's trickery, she doesn't care. She'll just carry on her merry way, making their lives miserable. 
hearing them grumble her name with a devious grin on her face. Megan. Number five, Drake's girlfriends. So, how was school? Actually, uh, pretty rough. <laughs> It's plain to see that Drake is the ladies' man of the twosome. He's almost always able to win over a girl's affection, even if she already has a boyfriend. However, Drake's not really one for commitment, and is hardly ever seen with the same girl twice. Sometimes he'll even wind up with multiple ladies in one episode alone. There are multiple factors for this. His fear of being tied down, his small attention span, or sometimes the girl just hilariously doesn't work out. Drake's dating resume is so long that even if he did find a long-term lover, it's only a matter of time before the awkward comedy gold of her meeting his many, many exes. Hey, Carly. Oh, hey, you. Uh. Number four, Josh loves Oprah. When I was her age, I had a crush on Oprah. <laughs> In season two, we find out that Josh used to have a crush on Oprah Winfrey. Can't say that we blame him. What can Oprah do? Oprah can do anything! Throughout the rest of the series, we see that Josh never quite got over that crush. He's got a cardboard cutout of her that he'll talk to, he'll sing her praises, and he'll tear apart anyone that disrespects her in any way. I hope you go bald. I hope they cancel Oprah. Take that back. Unfortunately, the only time Josh got to meet the talk show host of his dreams is when he accidentally hit her with his car. She filed a restraining order against him, but he did get an autograph, so that cushions the blow, so to speak. Watch it, watch it! Number three, boobs. Not there, you boob. Here. When Megan isn't pulling her insane pranks on Drake and Josh, she can usually be seen referring to the twosome as a pair of boobs. Her most recurring insult. Hey mom. Hey boob. Don't call me a boob. To be fair, they do occasionally boob it up when things go asunder for them, so it is a fitting nickname. But with how much she refers to them as such, it often feels uncalled for. Sometimes she'll just throw the insult at them just to get under their skin. Oh yeah? You nervous? What if they think you're a boob? I do. Compared to Megan's more devious tendencies against the boys, a little name calling is actually a lot more innocent. Plus, from a certain angle, her nickname for them could be seen as a term of affection. She must like some part of them, right? Boobs. <laughs> Number two, emphasis. Headaches, you give me headaches. Just put on the jacket. Being the lovably dorky guy he is, Josh sometimes likes to dramatically repeat stuff for emphasis. He could be expressing his excitement over a new gaming system, stressing how dangerous or evil something or someone is, or even showing just how much someone or something hurts him. Whatever the case, he makes the importance of whatever it is loud and clear. They're animals! Animals! <laughs> what makes the gag even funnier is how much comedic power Josh gives his voice when he's emphasizing. And it fits even more considering Josh is an eccentric guy as it is. While others can try their own spin at emphasizing, no one has quite the energy to really sell it like Josh can. I repeat things for emphasis. Emphasis! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Thank you, Josh. You're looking pretty spiffy yourself. I hate you, Dre. Hey, Craig. Eric. Do me a favor. Make sure that this guitar gets into the... That's Lucy, my ex-girlfriend. Oh, and uh, Josh, left your ointment at home. <laughs> Is nothing personal? I got it. <laughs> Number one, hug me, brother. Hug me, brother! <laughs> for all the things that go wrong for our favorite stepbrothers, occasionally they'll manage to pull off a victory. When they do, one of them, usually Josh, shouts those three little words and they join together in a massive bear hug. Hug me, brother! What happened? She dumped me. I'm free. Free of her and free of summer school. While it's hilarious to watch these two tussle it out, it only makes the moments of them showing brotherly affection when things go their way all the more worth it. Though they may want to cool it when in public. This gag has become so iconic for these two that it managed to sneak its way into the sitcom Grandfathered during an unexpected Drake and Josh reunion. What? Hug me, brother! <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.